Let's do the Kawhi. I'm in for the Kawhi. Um, so Kawhi Leonard uh, has a weird um, – he's had an ACL for a while, but it's been more than nine months. Um, and he's a professional athlete, so he quote-unquote should be back. But he's been having – they don't even call him setbacks, which means he's just not healing appropriately. Mm. Um, is he pretty up there in age at this point? No, he's like 30. He is. How old are you? 31. Like 31, but he's missed like the last three years. Yeah. Basically. He's been out. Yeah, he's been out. Um, since the bubble, he's been out. Um. But he's had some weird things going on where he's not he's either not healing properly or there's, you know, um, scar tissue build up. So one of the one of the big issues with a large surgery like an ACL surgery, um, any big ligamentous repair, mm -hmm. a little different from like an ectomy where like a meniscectomy or they like take something out of you. That's what ectomy is always taking something out. Mm. Um, the bigger issue with full repairs is what's called scar tissue. And scar tissue, I think we've talked on here before about how it just kind of lays down wherever. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It just lays down. And some people scar down more than others. Mm -hmm. Now, other injuries may scar down more than other injuries and blah, blah, blah. But it's it's really all subjective and not, like, really predictable. Mm. Um, so what probably happens is... Either the scar tissue is building up and it's making it really stiff and it doesn't move as well. And when you have things stiff, they don't move as well. Um, it can lead to um, some nervous responses, for for instance. Um, they have a response where if you have this injury, your body will say, hey, something's wrong there. Let's still protect that. And it'll send a bunch of swelling and edema and uh, histamines and prostaglandins and, and just stuff basically to fill it up, to give blood to the area, to try to heal and repair it uh, when it's past the phase of healing and repairing. So it's out of the, out of the inflammation phase, out of the proliferation phase and into the maturation phase, but it's still sending all the things that are in there for the, uh, inflammation and proliferation phase. So it's just basically sending extra stuff in there. It doesn't need yeah. to be there. Um, the problem with that is, too much swelling, one, it looks bad, two, it's like makes your leg heavier, three, it can actually shut off some of your muscles. Mm -hmm. So it's like it doesn't give it enough space to activate. And so your your nervous system um, not only needs space, but it has reflexes to stop itself from hurting itself more. Um, so specifically, you have these things called GTOs. Mm. Um, which are in your, they're called Golgi tendon organs. Yeah. Um, and that's at the end of your tendons, basically. And they sense extreme tension. And so they will actually respond if you have too much weight. It'll cause your muscle to kind of shut off before you hurt yourself. Now you can override those. Um, but sometimes if it's pure um, edema, swelling, you have other reflexes that are in that kind of similar similar pattern where it's going to sense stress something. and it's going to sense something and it's going to basically shut off your muscle so you can't use it so if that's happening that's tough exactly it, it, you can kind of see where i'm going with that is yeah. if he has these responses in his knee still from it attempting to heal itself and it not being able to it can lead to um, decreasing your just neural fibers inside of your muscles and when you're in a peak peak athlete if you have any loss in fibers like that's a big difference does his um height have a lot to do with this as well um his size just in general would put more stress on your knee than others yeah, which, which would make it even more important to have these if you have these problems it's going to make even more of an impact 